Hey guys, so this video is about this piece of equipment right here. This is the Graco uh, electronic solenoid valve. Um, and we are using it and applying it to this application. We have a seven and a half KW Westerbeek gas generator. Um, this is on a 33 foot kind of crossover boat. It's got twin Yamaha 300s. So this boat goes uh, pretty fast. It tops out at 50, 55 miles an hour. Uh, cruises at about 30 to 32. Now, why are we installing this on this generator? So this boat was equipped with a high speed pickup for the generator. Now that is not a proper application. You're not supposed to install high speed pickups for a generator on a boat that runs this fast at cruise. What happens is when the generator is not running, let's say it shuts down, it overheated, low oil pressure, shuts down for any reason, throws a code, or you just didn't want to run it for the day. What's happening is that generator is off, okay? But the high-speed pickup is still forcing an absorbent amount of water through the through hull, up through the strainer, through the raw water hose, to the generator, even though the generator is not running, okay? So the manufacturer says, oh, well, you need to come down here whenever you're not running the generator and shut the seacock off, okay? Shut it off like this. So that doesn't happen. So that water flow is not forced and introduced to the generator when it's not running. All right, fair enough. But that's not reasonable. That's not, that's not good, okay? A manufacturer can't just rely on that, all right, um, in my opinion. What if, what if you're running on cruise, I mean, at cruise, and you can't even, you can't hear the generator shut off. You, you can't, you don't know if it's shut off when you're running. Um, so that's, that's just not good advice. That's, that's not a good manufacturer right there. Um, they should have installed this. If they're going to run a high-speed pickup for a, a, a generator and a boat that runs this fast, you have to have something that shuts the water flow off from the through hull to that piece of equipment, okay? If I took that raw water hose from the strainer off that engine and I got up to 32 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour on plane, it'd fill up a five gallon bucket. Now that's trying to force into the, your engine and it's, and it's gonna introduce that water into your cylinders if, it's not care, if you're not careful. That's why they tell you to shut the seacock off. So to eliminate that need, okay, from somebody who just doesn't want to deal with it. What we've done is we've used the Graco, Graco uh, electronic solenoid valve, okay? It's a one-way valve that um, opens the valve when uh, 12 volts is uh, put to the solenoid right here at the top, okay? So it opens that valve and allows water flow. Now, when the valve doesn't have any voltage going to it, it closes, it closes the valve so that water is not forced through the system into the generator, all right? So how did I do that? Well, I just uh, came up with a little, um, a uh, little harness here, if you will, um, or a jumper. And what I did was I jumped it using a little two foot piece of 18 gauge duplex wire and I spliced it into the electronic fuel pump, okay? Whenever this, this engine, this Westerbeek is running, okay, that electronic fuel pump is also running. It's supplying fuel pressure to the fuel rail, which uh, supplies the injectors, which fires it off. So I spliced this into the fuel pump wires, okay? Just positive in the ground. Now it doesn't matter here. Uh, you can you can do positive or ground on either one of those connections. It doesn't matter um, which side you put it on, but you have to uh, you know keep them similar, right? So I ran you know positive red to that side and ground to that side. So when I activate this fuel pump, I don't know if you heard that or not, but I'm activating the fuel pump that solenoid clicks on. It opens when the fuel pump uh, turns on. So when the generator goes through its start process, when I hit start there, the fuel pump activates, it opens the solenoid valve, 
and it allows that raw water to enter into the generator and the impeller can pull that water now. So basically it's just an automatic shutoff for if the generator, if you didn't want to run the generator for the day, but you still wanted to cruise around on plane, or if it accidentally shut down on you, this is going to prohibit the generator from filling up with water, um, ingesting salt water into the cylinders, um, and which is a big deal. So if that happens, you know, you're out, you're out 15 grand. This, this generator right here is about 15 grand. So, and, and you, you really can't rebuild these. I mean, I guess some guys can, but most guys just say, nah, it's ruined. Just, you need a new one. So you can't have salt water get into the cylinders. And if you don't install this, or if you don't close that seacock, when you're running a boat like this on plane, it can be any manufacturer. Several manufacturers do this that have not installed that right there. Several. I could name a ton. Where they're installing high-speed pickups on the bottom of the boat, and that strain, and it's pushing water through that strainer to the generator when the generator's off, which is not good. So here's another look at that. I just spliced it into that fuel pump. Obviously, we're using heat shrink connections. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap all that up and make it look a little better. But uh, come to here, goes to the solenoid, and uh, obviously we're gonna we're gonna double hose clamp all that stuff. So this is just I just got it in here, but. Uh, so I just wanted to explain that and why it's such a big deal to have something like this installed or in line. You can also mount that solenoid on the strainer itself. I just I just did the inline route. It's a little easier. I wanted to keep the uh, wires over here closer to the generator, so I just put it in line. Um, I didn't want to have to come all the way over here, but you can do it right out of the uh, strainer there. You can thread that three-quarter inch uh, uh, barbed, thread it in right into the strainer and uh, pipe tape it and be done with it. So there you go. If you have any questions uh, about this or why it's so important or how it's done, leave it in the comments.